it's November the 4th, it's Wednesday, it's 11 o'clock. That can mean only one thing, it's Trump week. I'm Tim Apicelli, your host, and it is post-election night. The title of this show is 2020 election night. Who is the president? Uh, I was up till three o'clock in the morning and um, not to be disappointed because the election results are not, they're not here. Uh, at three o'clock in the morning, we didn't have a pathway one way or the other as to who might be the next president. Uh, true to form, Donald Trump did not disappoint me. Uh, around midnight Hawaii time, he uh, tweeted the following. We are up big, but, we are but they are trying to steal the election. We will never let them do it. Votes cannot be cast after the polls close. Well, you know what, Donald? I agree, votes cannot be cast, but they sure can be counted. And that's what's taking place today. Uh, then he um, entered the, the, uh, the room in the White House with his friends and family, and the following quotes were made. Millions and millions of people voted for us. A very sad group of people is trying to disenfranchise that group of people. This is a fraud on the American public. Frankly, we win the election. So true to form, as no surprise to me, Donald Trump did try to declare the election uh, victory. Uh, that was well before we have eight, at least eight states at the time that have not finished their count, have not finished their, uh, their vote, vote count, and there is no clear direction on which way it could go. Now, he was very upset that uh, Arizona was not being counted any further, um, and he wanted that to take place because he thought Arizona is going to be in the uh, GOP column. And yet that he's enraged that Michigan, Wisconsin, and Pennsylvania, those votes needed to stop. And he said he was going to go to the Supreme Court the next day to stop it. So without further ado, let me introduce our guests. Good morning, everyone. Today we have Jay Fidel, Winston Welch, Cynthia Lee Sinclair, and Stephanie Dalton. Happy post-election day. Ugh. <laughs> Jay. Let's go to you. Um, were you surprised that Donald Trump tried to claim victory well in advance of the votes, 2 million votes in Pennsylvania being counted, uh, hundreds of thousands of votes in Michigan and Wisconsin and Arizona? Um, no surprise there, was it? Oh, Are you trying to all. pull this off? Everyone knew he was going to do that. And, uh, and I suppose everyone knew he was going to, he is going to try to um, contest uh, this election, or part of it anyway, uh, in the Supreme Court. I'm not sure how he gets there that fast, you know, because there is a procedure to go to the Supreme Court. You just can't walk in the door. Um, so well, not only that, but he can't stop the vote counting by going to the Supreme Court. Well, it depends on what they rule. He's asking them to stop it, not not count votes uh, anymore. Um, and you know, he's got a six to three favorable group for him as conservatives. So it's hard to say that they'll, they'll rule the right way. It's hard to say that. That's what we got now. We got a, a Supreme Court that you, that you have to wonder about, honestly. How long does so it take I, for that I process say, oh, to take place? I, I, you know, okay, you can say that it's close. You can say that Biden is, is a pass. Uh, I think critical state would be, uh, what, Michigan? Yeah. Because um, it looks like uh, Biden is good, I think. But I think it's in Wisconsin. It's very close. And Wisconsin's Trump's been called for, for a recount. Uh, yeah, Wisconsin has been called for Joe Biden. Yeah. So anyway, you know, bottom line is uh, Biden has a path. He's not as confident as he was. He canceled all his meetings and gatherings and parties that were scheduled for today. Uh, and we'll all have to do the cliffhanger for a few days, see what happens both in the, in the vote and uh, in the uh, still forthcoming blue wave and, and very possibly in the Supreme Court. But the reason I say UGG is, um, is that I thought, and I suppose all of us thought, that we were going to see a blue wave, that the country had had enough of Trump. Um, you know, even people who were relatively speaking conservative. But that, that really hasn't happened, has it? A lot of people voted for him. A lot of people voted for Republican in the Senate. Um, you know, all across the board, the Republicans made a terrific showing yesterday and since. 
Now, it could be that there's a lot of votes in the pipeline and, and all that will change and my, my UG will turn into a hooray. Um, but for now, you know, what I get is a lot of people in this country have been fooled by a grand demagogue. And I, I, you know, we've been asking, all of us have been asking this question now for years. What is it about this country? We have 40% or possibly more yesterday, um, you know, like him and like the Republican Party and like what has happened. It's just incredible. You know, Americans are dying at a, at a rate of a thousand a day. We have millions and millions of cases. He's done nothing about it and they vote for him. Is it, uh, what is it, is it about that? Is it, you know, are we at a, a point as a nation? Of, are we at a point in as a nation that they identify with a, a president of grievance versus a president of optimism and vision and foresight? I think, I think we, uh, I think we're a nation of fools. I think we're a nation. It goes to what Stephanie was saying before the show began about education. You know, we've had three, four generations of uh, un under, under below standard education in this country. There's no critical thinking going on in, in vast swatches of the country. Uh, there's this strange thing about power and Trump and how he relates and does his, uh, his dog whistles to them. Um, and they respond, the country is not fit to govern itself. It reminds me of, uh, of Ben Franklin walking out of uh, Liberty Hall. A woman stopped him and said, <clears throat> Dr. Franklin, what kind of a government will we have? You've heard this. Uh, and he says, uh, we're going to have a republic, madam, if you can keep it. Well, the burden is on us to keep uh, the republic, the democratic republic. And we're doing it. We collectively, all of us, 300 and some odd million of us are doing a really bloody terrible job. And this yesterday demonstrates that. It well, was I such a clear choice. And, yeah. it, and, and the country did not rally around it. I'm sorry. I understand the vote and the fact that it wasn't a wave and we're split right down the middle. I will, um, I have to tip my hat to uh, Vice President Pence. No sooner did Donald Trump say that uh, this, this election has been stolen and um, they're not gonna count any more votes and we're gonna stop it, the Supreme Court. Uh, Mike Pence went up to the microphone and said, we are gonna count these votes. And uh, you know that took courage to do that right in front of Donald Trump and um, my hat's off to him. All right. We'll see what happens on this. But you know, the bottom line is if you if you were confident at some level in your in your psyche a few days ago, you really can't have that confidence now because uh, you know, Congress is still going to be botched up. That's my prediction. Uh, various uh, state houses are going to be botched up. Um, we're even even if Biden wins, he's going to have a slug fest on getting any initiative through um, and he's going to have lobbyists all over him, all over the Congress. Uh, fighting everything he does. It's going to be like Obama at best. Um, okay. So, hey, you know, we got a question be, coming in. Sorry. Go ahead. We're Go. going to be locked up. And if you were thinking of uh, the you know, United States returning to the world stage, of uh, dealing with um, you know, climate change, or dealing with um, you know, open trade and all those things that, that make for a sustainable planet, of dealing with COVID, on a, plan, on a global basis, forget about it. I, I don't think those initiatives are going to have, ha happen. And, and I would say, too, um, that we're going to suffer from COVID. Let's not forget about COVID. Uh, it's going great guns. There is no vaccine. There won't be a vaccine for a year. And between now and the end of that year, many thousands, many, many thousands of Americans will die. And our economy will be in the tank and worse all that time. And there'll be unrest on the streets all that time. So this, this vote, even if Biden wins, signals a great tragedy for our country. Yeah. Okay, Jay, thank you so much for your thoughts and comments. Hey, Stephanie, we have a question that's come in and we very much appreciate the questions that come in from our viewers. This question is the following. Many millennials feel disillusioned by the electoral college. Does any of the hosts still believe in the electoral college? So Stephanie, why don't you take that one on? 
Well, thank you for the question. And uh, I appreciate the challenge. I think that's a very tough question. None of us know enough about the electoral college. And I believe that I didn't ever get schooled in it and I, neither um, did many other people. But I think that it's a way for um, the, the, the state's rights to play out. In other words, the founders saw the large states and the smaller states and the different maybe they saw the different populations, which wasn't so disparate back then. But um, I think it's just a way to make sure that states had um, a voice um, above uh, the people, really. So, I mean, it took us out of being a real democracy and moved us into being a republic because we are not direct, re, directly electing the president by the people. But uh, having the state's layer come in and do uh, perhaps modifications where they can because some of the state's um, electors do have the option of vo voting outside of the popular vote in their state. So I think that that's the next uh, presentation of difficulty um, and uh, a mountain to climb. You know, we, had that, we had that situation in the last election where one, one uh, electoral voter wanted to vote outside of Donald Trump's victory and cast his vote for Hillary Clinton. And um, he was uh, basically told under no circumstance, will you cast a vote outside the popular uh, vote taken in, in that state? And I, I can't remember the name of this, the, the state of it right now, but um, there was definitely a situation in the last election where that person was chastised and said, you will vote as, as directed. I think you're absolutely right. I believe that the states intended or the, the government intended to take a look at this and see how it, how it worked and to make sure that states' laws were clear about what it is that their, their elect, electors um, voted for. But remember, they used to talk about the super delegates and, and they're also these super electors. So I think we are gonna have a lot to learn. And this goes back to my concern about our wonderful media, but they still need to work harder because we should know a lot about this now. I think that they're, they ought to be educating or presenting on the electoral college and how does it work? Because we have to go through that coming up December 1st. So we're down to less than four weeks and here that comes. So do we still have super delegates or super electors who can make that choice on their own recognizance or is everybody guided by the state or do we still have that particular state you're referring to Tim in the position of having to work with their electors to or persuade them you know what did their laws say here's right. another big gap we don't know about and I would like to see the media attend yeah I think that's a good point and everyone would need further education on that and <laughs> if not education at least a reminder Thank you, Stephanie. Hey, uh, Winston, uh, what surprises did you observe uh, last evening? Things that, um, the biggest of surprises, I suppose, I guess there was many surprises, but at least the, uh, the larger ones that came to your, to your attention and, and some of your thoughts about that. The America that we all believe in, I think that we believe in um, and that we, we, we hope for was, um, lost last night let's face it these people that voted for donald trump know what they're getting this time they know what kind of man he is they know his moral quality his ethical quality uh they know the people that were supporting him uh the, the, the entire republican party it's it, it, it's uh you know they they have a different vision of america than i think the other half of America has. And it is this one man who's been able to marshal them together for whatever reasons, um, whatever they think the grievances are. What I, so I, I guess I came away feeling profoundly um, sad, I guess would be the, the emotion that I had for it, that, that we're as a nation saying, yeah, this is okay. So what if we just bulldoze over all this stuff that you know used, we used to hold um, valuable? However, that said, half the nation did not do there. And I believe once the uh, votes are counted, and we're not people aren't voting anymore. It's just about like uh, the the governor of uh, Pennsylvania says we may not know the results even today, but the most important thing is that we have accurate results. I fear that if if uh, Biden is not elected, we may not even have 
elections as we understand them uh, today. I was happy that there were no real big shenanigans yesterday uh, compared to what all the threats and the, the fear that we heard. So that was a, a very positive uh, point. Um, I think elections were carried out uh, pretty, pretty well, especially given the COVID times. Um, I was happy to see Fox News call Arizona uh, for Biden, showing some degree of independence, but maybe they were just doing that to stave off the inevitable, which we all knew he was going to declare this independence. Um, other well, that, that particular action um, created much fury for Donald Trump. I mean, he went, he went ballistic on that call, and it was his own Fox News channel. It was his own news channel. Uh, that's true. Uh, and that, so that gave me hope. And I think people just showing up in mass numbers saying, no, we can't have this. I mean, uh, the pollsters, also big losers uh, uh, of the night, I think Again. what they were underestimating was the degree of people who were ashamed to vote for Donald Trump and refused to tell them I'm voting for him because at the end of the day, they know what they did was wrong, but they were voting for him anyway for whatever convoluted reasons they came up with but they were too ashamed to say so in advance. And I think that speaks volumes uh, to um, people making choices that were not the best choices. They just did it out of um, whatever reason, but they well, were ashamed I, to announce it in advance. I think there is a, an element of people just being ashamed and not willing to admit they wanted to vote for Donald Trump and keeping that under their hat. But there's also a methodology with post, you know, being a poster these days. And I'm sorry, but if they're still calling people on a landline, to get an answer on how someone may or may not vote. Um, it is, it's 20 years in the past, it's 30 years in the past. Uh, so they're gonna come up with a new methodology to get more accurate uh, indications from would be polls, you know, people to be polled that you get a more accurate read on who's, who's really interested in uh, voting for a president. You know, Tim, I think the, the, the other thing I wanted to add is that 50% of the people in our country, they're not evil, they're not bad. Um, they've been lied to by the media. They've been lied to by this president. They've been duped. And if they've been getting their news source from limited sources, or they've been made to be afraid, be afraid of all the changes that have happened in America the last 50 years, especially, they're going back into a place yeah. of fear. And we are going to have I, I to tag onto that. I want to tag onto that exact point, if you may, if I might. Um, look at Miami Dade in Florida. Uh, heavy Cuban population, a lot of uh, South Americans have immigrated into Miami-Dade, and uh, Donald Trump was quite successful painting Joe Biden as a Castro-like or uh, Hugo Chavez-type dictator, a uh, socialist, and um, nowhere did Joe Biden in Miami-Dade County get anywhere near the percentage of votes he needed to pull off that victory. Yeah, that's right. I, 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 again, it's lies about that Joe Biden is a Marxist. I mean, come on. It was so insane, but people, when that's, when you're being fed a constant stream of fear, um, you're kind of, you, you'll go back into the fight or flight animal, um, you know, reflex. So whatever happens out of this election, we have a lot of repairing and, and uh, as you said, Jay, about Stephanie's comment, education. This is what happens when you hollow out the ability of people to think for themselves. An educational crisis, we have a spiritual, moral uh, economic uh, financial crisis of the first order in this nation. And uh, it's not going to end with whoever is uh, decided to be the president. In fact, I think we just have to take a very deep dive into all of our institutions um, and, and find out how are we going to repair and reclaim this nation so that we can move forward from here. Because obviously we've got a lot of work to do, but, but there was no violence yesterday. And people of goodwill are on both sides they are of goodwill. Half the nation is not the enemy. They are just, they have, in my, my, my thinking, they have been, um, you know, made to be afraid and lied to for so long that it's hard to tell the truth anymore. And they feel okay. the same about the other side. So, you know what, we got some work to do, a lot of work to do. Hey, thanks, Winston. You're, as always, your comments are very much appreciated. Cynthia, we have another question. and I'm going to direct this question at you. Do you think the record-breaking number of voters are from people being against Trump or from people who found more free time because of COVID? Well, 
finding more free time, I don't think is really a part of it. I think this whole election has been so polarized and people are so passionate about how they feel about things that I don't think this was just some accident happening because of COVID. Now, because of COVID, You're talking about the increase in voter population, right? Right, and so I, yeah. I think it's, just, it's a passion um, inspired thing, not necessarily, I, I got more time on my hands. I think um, that because people do have, you know, this whole COVID threat over their heads, that they were more likely to vote by mail. Um, you know, more states allowed it. So I think that was part of it. But I think more than anything, that people just responded out of passion more so than anything else. Do you think Donald Trump put the, it backfired on him to cast doubt on the ability of the post office to deliver a ballot in time and maybe people got their ballots and dropped them off at the deposit boxes or they voted in person well before election day? Do you think that backfired on Donald Trump? I think it totally did. But then, okay, you guys know, I, I have felt that he was going to cheat electronically. So if he had his you know, plan all set up, then suddenly everybody's voting by mail. He's like, oh no, that was, you know, his ace in the hole. <laughs> now, you know, he's sort of lost his ace in the hole. And I know I've sounded a little almost conspiracy theory and I don't want to sound like that. I don't want to sound like Trump because of that. But I think that's maybe part of what keeps people from talking about this. And I just want to make a couple of really quick points. There are, there are a lot of articles out there by a lot of very reputable media sources, Reuters, Washington Monthly, NPR, Independent, NBC News. These are all starting in you know, 2018, 2019, 2020. There's a really big one that I think everyone should watch. It's by NBC Nightly News. And um, I was uh, December 19th, 2019 airing. And it's titled Chinese Parts Hidden Ownership, Growing Scrutiny. Well, where's all the scrutiny? What happened to it? This was 2019. We know for sure that Georgia is using um, election equipment from a company called Dominion. Dominion has been linked directly to an oligarch from Russia. Now, and I know that sounds kind of convoluted, but I really challenge people to look this up. And if there's going to be a challenge anywhere, I think it should be the Democrats challenging some of these Republican votes. Well, if, if this is tied up in the courts, I guarantee you there'll be a spotlight on every state and their methodologies of counting the votes. So uh, they, that might happen just by where we're at right now in the election cycle. Hey, we're starting to run out of time. So um, thank you very much, Cynthia. Uh, Jay, uh, let me get your opinion on this. You know, Donald Trump did a lot of crazy, wacky things in the last week of the campaign stop. He, uh, you know, he accused the, the doctors of gaining profit for uh, switching death certificates from a natural death to a COVID death, and they're allegedly getting a thousand dollar stipend for each one they changed. Uh, he accused Dr. Fauci of, you know, not knowing what he was doing. And he said that, you know, just wait till after the election, he'll probably be fired. He, he implied that at one of his campaign stops. He uh, obviously during the entire time on the campaign trail, he ignored COVID and most people in the audience didn't have a mask. Um, he called for um, victory, victory before the, the voting, voting day even started. He called for victory, and he certainly cast out on the electoral process as being fraudulent. Is there any one thing in your mind that came up that Donald Trump either did well for himself or shot his big toe off uh, before Election Day? Well, you have a, 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 an impressive list of things or I could say that he shot his toe off. But the big thing that he did is entertainment. He, he maintained his agenda. Uh, he controlled the news cycle every single day. And uh, you can say that it was nutcakes for him to have these huge rallies, but he, with some cause, believes that rallies bring people together, that rallies um, you know, sort of mm, bolster his popularity. Uh, and they and the human condition, you know, all these people in a room, all shouting praise for him, it really seals their votes, doesn't it? And anyone watching says, "Oh, that's a winner." So if there's one thing he did that was, you know, typically Trump, he had these ridiculous rallies. 
it wouldn't have affected me. I wouldn't have gone. None of us here, but but it did affect a lot of people who are undereducated and who are basically fools. You think that attributed to him getting the last um, yeah. eke out? I think a he lot made of people progress in the last person. week. I think he made progress in the last week. Yeah. And Biden's message is is, is vanilla. It's a, let's let's get together on this. You know, that's not exciting. Um, and it doesn't it doesn't maintain the top of the news agenda. So uh, I think Biden's uh, campaign, is, you know, it's nice, it's credible, it's moral, it's ethical, it's it's decent. But a lot of the country doesn't care about that. And the human condition, a lot of humanity doesn't care about that. That's why he won. That's why he won in 2016 when we didn't know him. But we saw that kind of apprentice talk show, uh, rather not talk show, but uh, reality show host. And that's why now when we do know him, we're still hypnotized by his reality show host. Yeah. And so I, I think we have a, a nation that is, as I said before, unable to retain its democracy. And we're seeing that. And although, you know, I appreciate, uh, you know, Winston's, um, you know, thoughtful, uh, if not optimistic suggestions, uh, who's going to do this work? And Stephanie, who, who's going to change the electoral college? That's going to take a, a constitutional amendment. Do you really think, do any yeah, of you here really think that we're going to get a constitutional amendment that runs against the Republicans? Against well, Trump? that goes right now to the fact that it does not look like the Democrats are going to take the Senate. So we may be in gridlock like we were with uh, Barack Obama. Uh, we may have four years of complete gridlock again if, if Mitch McConnell takes his ball and goes home. Goes well, home I, would, I would differ with you. I would say that the country cannot afford gridlock if, if it is to survive over the next four years. Um, if, if, the, if the Senate and the House are in gridlock, um, it can't do initiatives, it can't get anything done, can't help people who are in, in COVID. If, if Trump is the president for the next four years, we are truly done. Even the optimists won't be able to find a way out of that as, okay. as a nation. Hey, we got Jay, we have one minute left. I would like to go around the panel and just say, what's in store for us for the next uh, three days? What do, you, what do you predict? Well, Jay, go ahead. Um, for me? Yeah, Jay, go ahead. Mixed and I'll go bag. The I'm, I'm on the fence as to whether he wins. He's on the fence as to whether Biden is on the fence as to whether he wins. And I am I am really petrified as to the result in either event. OK, thank you, Jay. Stephanie, what do you think happens in the next three days? Um, terrified. And for the future, also, we need to attack the media. We need to start following these Hannity things and then call them out and, and have them questioned as to their veracity. I really think we're going to have to do something about those other those other streams of influence on the public. Well, maybe they're disclaimers like they now do on Twitter and Facebook. Maybe they're disclaimers as they speak. And there's a banner above the head and below the neck. OK, go, go thank you. It. Yep. Hey, Winston, what do you think happens in the next three days? Uh, scary, but hopefully things will clarify and we won't need a recount. Um, sadly, I saw that only 66% of mail-in ballots had been delivered in Philadelphia by election day. Same for Atlanta, 82%, Detroit, 79%, Greensboro, 72%. We're talking like, this is what Cynthia is talking about, is this mass voter disenfranchisement. When the post office was ordered to deliver these things, that's the sort of thing that, uh, that makes us all wonder. The courts are my biggest fear. If the Senate's controlling this, there may not be one confirmed justice for the next four years, even if Biden is elected uh, president. So we have a lot of um, difficulty ahead. Um, I want to remain optimistic, and I think the counts will bear out. But if Donald Trump's elected, all bets are off. And I'm well. I think I think it's going to go to Biden. I just I just do believe that. Uh, thank you very much, Winston. Uh, Cynthia, you get the last word on this. What do you think is going to happen in the next three or four days? I think a lot of people are going to be having a lot of psychological PTSD type issues. And I think it is very, very important for everyone to take good care of themselves. Come away from the television for a while. Go for a walk, you know, eat well, try to sleep well. You know, it's going to be, and I hate to use a Trump phrase, but it's going to be what it is, right? And, and all the worry in the world isn't going to change that. And so I really want to see people taking care of themselves, not getting too caught up in all of that trauma and, and anxiety 
because that's the stuff that's going to lead to violence in the streets, right? So that's the stuff that I'd like to see you know, calm down and 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 be to paid attention to. You know, I'm really glad to hear you say that. I'm going to personally take that advice to heart. Um, I can't be watching these shows morning, noon, and night. And <laughs> I'm looking for a new renewal. And um, thank you very much as, as, uh, on that bit of advice. It really is a it was well spoken, and we appreciate it very much. I'd like to thank our guests. We're out of time. I'd like to thank Jay Fidel, Winston Welch, Stephanie Dalton, and Cynthia Lee Sinclair. We'll see you next week, and I'm pretty sure we'll know who the president is, the president officially is by next week. But until then, join us next week, Wednesday, 11 o'clock, Trump Week. I'm Tim Apicella. Aloha.